Steve, we're on the floor of the 2014 AUVSI conference. There's obviously some tremendously interesting airframes out there, but if you notice, a lot of these airframes seem to have props or some kind of rotor attached to it, and that would seem to bring you in uh, a very opportune moment. Tell us what Tensinich Technologies is doing here at the AUVSI conference. We've been making propellers for over 80 years for a range of aircraft and airboats, but we've also been making propellers for target drones and remotely piloted vehicles for over 40 years. But the technology has really progressed at a rapid pace in the last 15, 20 years, and we've had to make changes. We've had to grow along with that, both in our design technologies and in our manufacturing capabilities. Particularly, not just the traditional tactical vehicles where we've always had a very good strength in that area, but now, uh, particularly in the small type vehicles, they call them SUAS, small unmanned aerial systems. What you see here is a pretty good showing, particularly of our tactical line and also the smaller SUAS propellers. We handle both wooden propellers, that's still one of our core competencies, we make aluminum propellers, but the big shining star is the composite fabrication technology that we've developed, as you see this propeller on the very top. We started off with hollow molding technology with an internal bladder pressure molding system, but we've also grown into foam core composites using high temperature prepreg materials and aluminum molds. And what that offers you is a very strong monocoque construction very high strength to weight ratio, and a lot of stiffness. So even under load, it maintains its aerodynamic profile and gives you maximum performance. Now, while many of the machines here are your standard fixed wing prop driven type of aircraft, we're noticing an awful lot of uh, quad, octo, hexacopters, and things of, the, uh, things of that nature. Are you building uh, props, if you will, for, or as rotors for these, uh, for these aircraft? We've been making some ducted fans for larger scale, but we recently started making some smaller scale um, multi-copter, multi-rotor blades, what have you. Uh, and in particular, we're looking at uh, scaling that technology down to say the 20 to 30 inch diameter multi-copters, both electric and in the hybrid uh, technology. That seems to be very popular where um, you know, the electric vehicles work great, they just don't have the endurance. And so kind of like the Prius vehicle by uh, Toyota where they leverage a, a gasoline engine driving a generator, which then drives the electric motors, they're also starting to do that quite a bit in uh, aircraft, uh, particularly the uh, UAVs. And that's something we're very excited about to apply our technology to. How big a market has this become for you? UAV is, has always been an important aspect of our production, um, probably you know, maybe a quarter of our business or more, but it's a key aspect of our business. A lot of technology there, it drives a lot of other advances we've made in our other product lines in light aviation and in our airboat propellers too. But it's a key enabler technology wise, particularly with the composite capabilities that we've developed. What's really is exciting is the commercial market. Now the FAA is having some issues trying to, to handle that on a regulation standpoint. They don't want pretty much every Yahoo just flying UAVs into buildings and cars and that sort of thing. And so they're taking a very studied approach to drafting regulations so that the operators have a minimum level of uh, training, understanding of airspace and operating rules and that sort of thing. And we want to be part of that. We want to be there for the professionals with the larger payloads in the agricultural, traffic reporting, emergency response, and that sort of thing. Are you seeing the attention being given to the UAV market in your part uh, benefiting the technologies you're bringing to the general aviation market? Weight is always critical in any type of aircraft application. It's particularly critical with the electric aircraft. They're at such a disadvantage with heavy batteries, even with the LiPo, lithium polymers and all that. And so, yeah, I think you'll see some benefit. It, it's really been driving us hard uh, from the strength to weight standpoint and efficient structural um, um, cross sections and that sort of thing. So I think you will see some of that being applied to our light aviation and other product lines. We appreciate your time here on the floor of the AU VSI 2014 event. 
And more important than anything else, uh, we'll look forward to seeing what you come up with next. Thank you very much. Aero TV is brought to you by Renbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Renbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration.